Hello and welcome to the IB Biology exam for May 2022. It's happening in less than a month from today. In fact, it's happening on Wednesday the 11th of May in the afternoon. Standard level students, SL students, you will be taking just two papers. Of course, paper three has been removed because of the stresses of the COVID pandemic. But of course, most students in the world will be sitting for this exam in the traditional way over the next um, couple of days. Over 20,000 students are expected to sit for the May exams. Standard level students, you will be having paper one, your multiple choice, which is made up of 30 multiple choice questions. These questions span the six core syllabus topics that you have to study. So you could expect about five questions per topic. That's what you go in there expecting. Question one is going to be lined up with topic one. And question 30 is going to be lined up with topic six. And you're going to have a nice sequence like that going through from question one to 30. If you can't do anything much to prepare at this stage, of course, there's still a lot of time, but assuming that you don't do very much, one thing that I recommend you must do is to be familiar with what you're supposed to know in these six topics. Just knowing the statement that IB makes, what they say is the understanding or the application. And you can get that by looking at the guide or what people call the syllabus and just reading through those understandings and those applications. Now for higher level students, HL students, you will have 40 questions and your work spans 11 topics, one to six, which is what students have in the core. But then you've got those seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11. My advice to you is to please focus your attention first and foremost on 7 to 11. You're definitely going to get questions on those and those are going to be the more difficult ones. So please begin your study by focusing on your HL work. And then if you have some time just before the exam, go back and make a quick review of your topic one to six. But your 40 questions will span those 11 topics. So you could expect about three questions per topic, three to four questions per topic, uh, depending of course on the length of the topic. Topic 11, for instance, quite a long one. Topic one is quite a long one. And um, you could expect that the starting topic and the finishing topic would actually have uh, more than just three questions on those. But once you're finished with your paper one, you would have actually be finished with 30% of the marks for your final score. And then of course, the other 20% uh, that's already finished with the internal assessment, that's already submitted to IB. It's being scored right now as I speak. And then with a short break, or some centers may not even allow you to leave the room, you would move into paper two. Paper two for standard level is one hour and 15 minutes long. It's made up of three components actually, or two sections. In section A, I say three components because the first question of section A is going to be on unfamiliar material. It's going to be based on data that has been extracted from some relevant and recent research paper. And you would have to answer questions that would cover about 12, 13 marks out of the total of 50 marks for that paper. To do well on that paper, it's important really that you are well rested and you can focus because it's not about recalling information, but it's about analyzing the graphs and looking carefully at the data, thinking carefully about the command terms in the question. If they're asking you to describe a trend, you look at the trends on the graph. If they're asking you to explain a trend, then you would have to relate what you see on a graph to some work that you might have covered in the, in the syllabus. So you need to be able to focus, to think, and to process and analyze all of that data that's going to be given to you. And if you can do that well, you're going to start off with a strong 
10 to 12 marks at the very beginning of the paper. And then you'll move into about three or four questions that are focused on the core syllabus to finish the rest of section A. Then you come to that important section B, where you select one question out of two to bring your total mark for the paper to 50 marks. And then, of course, this is carrying 50% of your final score in this year's examination. So it's very important that you work really well on that section B question. When you get your five minutes to read, as you should, as per IB regulations, you get the paper given to you, you're allowed to open it and start reading. When you get those five minutes of reading time, I recommend two things that you could possibly do with it. One is to start looking at the data-based question. The other one is to look at the questions offered in section B and decide which one is best for you and which one you can maximize your score and start thinking about how you would lay out your answer in a way that would communicate very clearly what you want to say because one mark is available for organizing your answer in a way that makes the points easily accessible to the examiner. For HL students, you have two hours and 15 minutes and for you it's very much of the same. You begin with a database question, you need to get your rest, you need to focus on that data. The rest of section A will be based on all of your syllabus, including the core one to six and also including what's called the AHL section, which is seven to 11 of your syllabus. And then once that's finished, you will have to do two questions out of three in section B. Again, it's important to reflect carefully and not choose a question simply because you can do well on part A. You need to look at all three parts of the question and take some time to decide these are the questions I want to do and then also reflect on how you would lay out your answer. Now, before I close today, I want to go in and take a closer look at one question from last November's exam dealing with topic two, another question that deals with genetics, and I want to use that to show you how you need to be careful in laying out your answer. What might seem like a very simple multiple choice question, and it comes from topic two of the syllabus, dealing with the special properties of the water molecule. Most students are quite familiar with the fact that one water molecule bonds closely to another molecule uh, by this process of cohesion due to hydrogen bonding where one water molecule is quite polar having a positive side and a negative side and it bonds to another water molecule next to it in fact one water molecule bonds to four other water molecules by this relatively strong intermolecular force called the hydrogen bond the energy needed to break this bond is quite significant when compared to other bonds that exist between molecules. And this is, of course, the reason why water has very, very unique properties. It's, it's why it takes a tremendous amount of energy to heat water up. The energy required to heat one kilogram of water up by one degree Celsius is referred to as the specific heat capacity of water. But when this water has to move out of the liquid state and into the gas state, when it has to evaporate, there is a different name or a different term that we would apply to that bond breaking that occurs because there's a phase change. And the energy required in that stage would be referred to as the heat of vaporization. So what is the benefit to living organisms that water has a high specific heat capacity? not a high specific heat of vaporization. Having a high specific heat of vaporization is what makes it good for A. Heat can be lost from the skin when sweat evaporates, absolutely correct. And very similar reasoning for why A is correct compared to why B is correct. But B is the correct answer for this question. Aquatic environments do not have a great fluctuation in their temperature. And this is due to water's high specific heat capacity to heat up the lake or the ocean by one degree Celsius requires a tremendous amount of energy. And this is the specific heat capacity to allow sweat from your skin to evaporate also requires a tremendous amount of energy. 
also has to do with the intermolecular forces in water. But this energy is referred to as the heat of vaporization. Now let's look at this question which carries four marks and from looking at it we might think that it's an easy opportunity to score four marks. Outline how two parents could have a child with any of the four ABO blood groups and you go straight ahead and you write out your four possible genotypes based on the fact that both parents need to be heterozygous. You recall that this is the way to write the allele for blood type A and the recessive allele for blood type O and the co-dominant allele for blood type B with the big letter B and the recessive allele for blood type O here. So uh, both parents here being heterozygous, one for blood type A and the other one for type B. And these here, the four possible offspring that they could have, this is how you outline how two parents could have a child with any of the four blood groups. And here you could see all of the four blood groups present. You draw this Punnett grid and you might be confident that you are going to score the full marks. And this is what I want you to reflect on with this question. Because just by drawing this grid, if you look at the mark scheme, you would see that the first set of gametes or parental uh, genotypes are shown, the second set shown. So both of those getting one mark each with this check here in A and this check here in B. Genotypes of offspring, all of them shown, would give you the third mark. To get the fourth, however, phenotypes of the offspring need to be listed and not just listed as these four here are listed but all four correct and linked to these genotypes so possibly in brackets here you should put type AB over here in brackets here in brackets you should put type B here you would put type A and here type O and when you pay attention to these little details it would turn what might be three marks into the four marks that you expect and deserve in the examination. Finally, I want to say good luck in this year's examination and I want to dedicate this video to all of my students in class of 2022. And on this slide, you'll see everybody's name in all of my three groups. Good luck again in this year's examinations.